So, Bat Family, all while the Arkham Asylum series is quite a long ways off yet, with us only knowing that Antonio Campos has been hired as the writer, director, showrunner, and executive producer. Also, with a little bit of an update here, because I keep getting asked, is this actually in development still? We also had an update from the president and head of TV of Matt Reeves's Sixth and Idaho Productions, Daniel Pipsky, teasing fans that the show is still in development in April, right before the writer's strike commenced. With all of that said, I wanted to go over several things that I'm excited for with the Arkham series, some things that I also just want to see that I'm going to chuck in there, and some other things that we're just left wondering about with the whole potential of this Batverse Arkham show. And as usual, guys, I've got quite a bit to say, so I would love to hear what you have to say about what I've got to say and any things that you want to see, any ideas that you've got, and just things that you're wondering about in general down in that comment section. Go ahead and like this video if you do go on to enjoy it, and subscribe for more bonus videos like this, trying to keep some of the Batverse hype alive. So starting with number one, so given that this is an Arkham series. And yet we're in the early stages of everything in this Batverse with Batman still early on and Matt Reeves also saying that the villains, the rogues gallery, are also in their infancy. So number one for me, at least with, you know, one of the things that I want to see but I'm also excited to see because I think this will actually be a thing to some extent, and that is at least one or two, believe it or not, you know, one or two new rogues gallery members in the actual Arkham show. Some of you out there may be like, really? We're, we're gonna see Rogues Gallery members in the show? Obviously, this isn't something I can confirm. Again, toss this under the what I want to see slash what I'm excited for, because I do believe there is a semblance of realistic expectation here. I do think there can be one or two Rogues Gallery members, and we've spoken about how I think, and this, honestly, like, there's, a, there's a boatload of Rogues Gallery members, so let me know yours down in the comments below, but one of the more realistic ones is potentially Jonathan Crane. Another one, of course, who very much so fits Arkham Asylum is Hugo Strange. I do believe that these are at least two characters that can be organically weaved into the series and built to somewhat reoccur in the mainline movie's plot as well. So that's another thing we're looking for is possibly things or characters within this Arkham show that can actually, you know, spread out into the main line movies. Now to somewhat further back up my thought and how we will at least get one or two rogues gallery members that we haven't seen before in this series is that Variety had an interview with Matt Reeves and I think what he said here really, really applies, especially since he was given the opportunity to explore things like this more in the Arkham spin-off that was announced after this very interview. So Variety say, while Dano's Riddler especially takes center stage in driving the story, Reeves also wanted to give audiences the feeling that other possible Batman villains could be lurking in the periphery, just out of the camera's gaze. I thought it'd be really neat if so much of the fabric of Gotham just already existed. And it was like an old Warner Brothers gangster movie. And if you took a certain turn, you might see a character in his origins. And as I've mentioned, we've heard little whispers and rumors out there and in recent videos where I cover the whole re-emerging rumor of Rogue's Gallery spin-off movies because apparently, as The Hollywood Reporter, this goes all the way back to over a year ago, they said Matt Reeves met with directors and writers for Rogue's Gallery spin-off movies. I think, and the reason why I'm mentioning that here is that in all reality, this could just be characters that we could see in spin-off series on Max like this in the Arkham show rather than that of a spin-off movie. More comments from Matt Reeves that help me believe that this is a possibility when he talks about Arkham is that he says, we've actually now moved more into the realm of exactly what would happen in the world of Arkham as it relates coming off of our movie. And some of the characters, again, in their origins, it's like a horror movie or a haunted house that is Arkham. I mean, just pay attention to the words that he said there. What would happen in the world of Arkham as it relates coming off of our movie and some of the characters, again, in their origins, I, I think that's pretty huge. And I don't think that just means Riddler and Joker. I think this very much so does apply to other characters, pretty much, if not all of the rogues gallery that are in their infancy that we can, I think you're getting the message by now, 
pop up in future projects, especially one titled Arkham. Now, you may be thinking, well, how could they pop up in Arkham if they're not really a rogues gallery member per se right now, if they're in their origins? Well, I, I guess there's a couple of ways of looking at that, because, for example, the unseen Arkham prisoner, uh, Barry Keown's character, which we know is the Joker, Matt Reeves heavily emphasizes isn't quite yet the Joker. He hasn't even titled himself the Joker, although he's got every characteristic and is in fact the Joker. He's not quite there yet, but I think we could have other characters in the Arkham show who aren't necessarily their fully fledged villain self yet, like that of Joker, even though Joker's gone the extra mile and has already committed crimes as a serial killer. But for example, we might have Jonathan Crane as a professor of psychology. He could be working as a psychologist at Arkham, but nefariously working on his alpha version of his fear toxin. I know that's quite a straightforward plot, but, you know, we could have little seeds like that just for example's sake. Feel free to expand on that, add all kinds of complexity and better writing down in the comments below. But I do feel like this is the somewhat essence we could touch on. The same applies, of course, to Hugo Strange and what he could get up to with patients, all leading into what is this haunted house vibe of the show. So number two here, this is more of a what I really want to see. It's already a somewhat confirmed thing. So speaking of a haunted house that is Arkham, we're talking about horror vibes. I mean, obviously, but I mean lean into that, man. Like, lean into it. So with the quote that we've already read out from Reeves talking about how it's like a horror movie or a haunted house, that spells out fantastic things. The Arkham series has a boatload of potential in not only just saying, yeah, yeah, it's horror vibed, but I'm talking like embracing the creepy horror aspects. Not to mention just a horror-like movie in Matt Reeves' universe. Like, sure, the, the first movie had horror vibes to it and thriller-esque elements such as the Riddler sneaking up behind the mayor and other parts here and there, but it didn't embrace horror as obviously it wasn't a horror movie. But one thing, if you think about it along the lines of thinking that I'm talking about here, is you can easily easily, easily, easily imagine how with the universe that Matt Reeves has created. Taking the lens that Matt Reeves has fitted with what produced that beautiful Gotham, the beautiful cinematography from Greg Frazier and everything like that, everything we saw, but then also get a little filter lens and pop that on top. And that little filter lens is a horror vibed lens. It's like a freaking natural born baby for this world, just waiting to be delivered. So yes, I mean, if you couldn't tell already, I want them to go hard on this. I'm talking Arkham Asylum, a serious house on a serious earth, and if you've read that, you know exactly what I mean. I'm not saying copy and pasting the story, but the very essence of that, the severity of tone, and if you translate that onto screen with the overall approach of the not only the, the way it's directed, but the story, the creepy corners of Arkham there. Matt Reeves, through saying what he has, really does indicate that he's not messing around and does indeed understand what Arkham needs to be. And Arkham just really, as, as we all know, isn't a pretty place whatsoever. And we've already lightly discussed, and I, I can already imagine that there's some messed up things going on there in the actual Arkham plot for the show. For example, when you somewhat decorate this, we, we do have that Riddler Year One prequel comic written by Paul Dano with the amazing artwork from Stevan Subic. And they actually briefly touched on Arkham Asylum in the actual world of Matt Reeves's Gotham, with how even right now it's not really fit for living despite there being some money put into the place from the Waynes years and years ago and that's because it was deemed inhumane at the time and one of the guests who was actually touring the facility when this was being said saying this is their idea of humane so despite it having upgrades in the past few decades it is um yeah, it is far from humane. They also go on to talk about how it's broke and Arkham just really reflects that in the quality of life that it, it somewhat seems to have there. And even though that's a comic book and technically it is canon and I always say, well, you know, comic book canon, they say that until, you know, things look different in the continuation of live action. I, I do think that the overall vibe of Arkham uh, with what they briefly touched on there when Riddler went there before the events of the Batman will be kept, if not 
my god, like this is an Arkham show. Obviously, they're going to dive head over heels more into that when it actually comes to properly conceptualizing this show. And I cannot wait because I, I just think, you know, th this whole second point is about the horror, the, the disgusting vibe of it all, the, the downright haunted aspect of it all. Just um, it, it's what the show's going to be about down to the very molecular level. And I just, I just really want them to not shy away from that in any way whatsoever. And I'm not saying every single millisecond of the show needs to be absolutely terrifying. That's not what I'm saying. Like jump scare here, there, everywhere. And jump scares can often be a cheap thing. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about how, again, to be fair, bringing up Mike Flanagan, a lot of his shows incorporate this sense of dread at times. For example, if you've got Midnight Mass or, you know, even like the most recent, uh, The Fall of the House of Usher, it's still very much... Mike Flanagan, but it's still very carefully curated. You've got a story there going on. You've got all the intrigue going on, but he doesn't completely over ice the cake, so to speak, with so much of it that you're like, oh God, there's not too much substance to the sponge of the cake with this weird analogy. There's there's a nice blend and it comes across more like an artful form of a, of a horror thriller-esque kind of show rather than that of like a cheap horror flick. So I want the same thing applied with regards to the storytelling, the filming, just everything in the Bat vs. Arkham series. So number three, this is a, I guess, another thing I want to see, but also a thing that I think will undoubtedly happen without any confirmations here, but that is indeed a continuation of the Joker and the Riddler, or at least the plan of the whole Gotham loves a comeback story. Now, I, I think this one is an obvious one to a lot of you probably watching this right now. And all while I know people have different opinions about how much of a continuation should we see of Joker's storyline in the Batverse with even Matt Reeves himself saying, I never was trying to say like, hey, guess what? Here, here's the Joker next movie. The idea was more to say, hey, look, if you think that trouble is going to go away in Gotham, you can forget it. It's already here and it's already delicious. So he is even saying there, like, it doesn't guarantee that we're going to see Joker in the second movie as a main character or even in part three. He just wanted to say that, like, <laughs> yeah, no matter what, Gotham will be plagued by the Joker again. And the ending scene was to somewhat tease that, oh, man, there's some delicious, disastrous, nefarious, diabolical crap coming uh, Batman's way and Gotham's way when the comeback story begins. Now, will we see that? I think that given we're getting an Arkham series, I feel like he has to be addressed to some extent. I feel like, honestly, and this may be too overconfident of me to say this, but I feel like there's no way he couldn't be addressed, even if the role was fairly sparingly, you know, used in the series. Another thing that just somewhat makes me confident about this is that Matt Reeves said another thing when specifically talking about the return of Barry Keoghan's Joker. There might be places, Reeves told Variety. There's stuff I'm very interested in doing in an Arkham space, potentially for HBO Max. There are things that we've talked about there. So it's very possible. It also isn't impossible that there is some story that comes back where Joker comes into our world. So right there, he's quite literally saying there might be places. Um, and also there's, there's stuff I'm very interested in doing in the Arkham space. Lo and behold, this was said before we've got the full on updates about the development, the showrunner, this, that, and the other, the tease right before the writer's strike that it is still happening. All of this good stuff that Matt Reeves is considering and very much so there is a space for Joker to come back in to the story. And that is the Arkham space. Lo and behold, we've got the Arkham space uh, still happening, right? So it does seem like an obvious thing. It would almost be weird if you, if you think about it, if we got the show and let's just say it's like another eight episode, one hour per episode thing like the Penguin and where... Oh, Joker and Riddler are there, but there's not even one scene of them. So for me, without rambling about that part too much, it is, you know, undoubtedly going to happen. And I do want to stress that just because I'm saying, oh, I do think it's undoubtedly going to incorporate at least Barry Keoghan's Joker. And to be honest, if you think that he's going to be in it, considering the cells are right next to each other, Paul Dano probably will pop back in as the Riddler as well. I'm not saying that he's going to be in all eight episodes or anything like that, but I still think that there's a lot that could be played with with regards to Joker, even if it focuses on a lot of other things, but then still circles back round to what Joker and Riddler are up to since the end of part one, go for it. I know I'm already going to get comments saying, we don't need to see Joker again. 
I I I, I want to see it. I don't need I don't need a potent dose, but. I want something. Now, number four that I'm absolutely buzzing for, yet also we can label number four most certainly a thing that we're kind of wondering about, given how little we know, is the way they actually choose to tackle the episode-to-episode -episode aspect and the storytelling and just the overall format. And I do think that will be done through other characters. I've talked a lot about before with how all while seeing characters such as Joker and Riddler, and as mentioned earlier, perhaps new origins for other characters subtly being weaved in there, perhaps the very origin for Jonathan Crane or Hugo Strange, or insert your suggestion down in the comments below. Maybe that could be a massive subplot of the series. But along with all of that, the key thing that I want to focus on with number four here is that we're guided through the story with the perspective of perhaps an Arkham security worker, or perhaps somewhat of an orderly, witnessing the diabolical things that are going on behind the scenes episode to episode. A perspective like this will really also help grant the horror experience from that of the audience member, because trust me, I get it, and I'm not against seeing the perspective from a sinister character in the series, but I think a good structure will be a narrative in where, let's just say, perhaps somebody new signs on for shifts at Arkham, not really quite realizing what they've got themselves into. Perhaps their shift is in the maximum security wing. Oh my god, you don't want to work there. I mean, there is one dude that we saw working in there at the end of, of, of the Batman part one, and I wonder what kind of stuff he hears. And maybe he's just wearing his freaking AirPods. I don't know. Perhaps the series involves a plot in where things go wrong wrong at the asylum of which makes it live up to the description of the haunted house. I have spoken about in the past my desire to see an anthology-esque episode to episode thing and when I say anthology I just mean the approach from a different perspective, from a different character, a different worker, maybe an inmate but then lo and behold all of those storylines do actually converge into something by the end of it that is connected and perhaps unbeknownst to the audience at the time. Now I'm not saying that is going to be the case, that is a low-key uh, desire of mine for an approach, but I also wouldn't remotely mind the approach I was just saying a second ago and how maybe we just have a new worker at the asylum and we're following their perspective at everything that is unfolding around them. They're, they're perhaps a bit green, naive to begin with, but then, my God, do things get a bit horrific. And just to emphasize again, I I'm pretty confident that it will somewhat float around or swim around that area of approaches because I just, as I said, don't think we're going to pick up with Joker, scene one, and then scene two, and then scene three, he's talking to Riddler about breaking out, and then by episode two and episode three goes by, we get more Joker, and I don't think it's going to be that way oriented. I think we're when it comes to characters like that, if we're lucky enough to see them in the show, which again, I do think we will, it will be more like the Christmas lights on the Christmas tree. The Christmas tree, in this weird analogy of mine, is the show and everything else we're going to explore with it. Maybe the origins of certain characters like Crane uh, being the, the psychologist, and we have the worker there just kind of witnessing things throughout his shift, but the Christmas lights are the more kind of cherry-picking moments where you want to decorate it with like, oh, here's another Barry Keown Joker scene, here's another Riddler scene. Obviously, it is, bottom line, too early to be getting hyped about the approach to format or the angle of storytelling they're going for, but I can imagine they're going to go down some avenues like this, and once again, the potential of this is just fantastic, and no wonder they're pursuing this Arkham series for reasons like this. So as for number five, and the last one here is, it's kind of like, uh, you know, what I'm somewhat expecting, but also a question that is on a lot of people's minds and that a lot of you are wondering about and, and as to why I wanted to include this here is what will it tie into? Will it tie into anything? How will it be a part of the timeline going forward, especially with what we know about how the Batman Part 2 is slated for release October 2025? Because there's a few ways to somewhat think about this. You know, we have the Batman and then we will have the Penguin series, which will see Oz Cobblepot rise in power. And that storyline supposedly bleeds into the Batman Part 2 to some extent. So can this Arkham show do the same thing? And then will it be tying in to a future movie? So I I've always imagined that it would tie into the events of the Batman Part 3. Just for the main reason of it being, once again, another project that every fan can enjoy in between the very long wait until that final installment. But one thing I do want to mention is that some people out there really do think that it could release before even the Batman Part 2. And I've always felt a bit like, 
I'm not so sure about that one, but never, never say never. So let's go over that. So although this series is in development, it has unfortunately suffered from the halted development of the writing strikes since May. So I can't imagine that the episodes are anywhere near done being written. They're probably only broaching the outline and maybe if we're lucky, they've done the pilot script or something like that. But let's still entertain this idea, especially as we're on the brink of 2024 now. So sure, now, especially as the WGA strike is over, it can be written again and maybe has even started work recently because the strike ended, uh, not ages ago, but a little while ago now, and that can indeed develop over the coming months. And you could argue that if all goes well in the months and months of writing into next year, into the spring, and then into the summer, it could be argued that all of those scripts for a six to eight episode series, eight episodes like The Penguin, could go into principal photography by the fall of 2024 to possibly release, yeah, before The Batman Part 2 in all the way in October 2025. So I can't really argue with that because some people do say, well, would they really be announcing that the Arkham show is in development, it's found its showrunner, writer, executive producer during 2022, early 2023, if it's not going to come out until like 2026. So maybe it could. Don't think the show would be a visual effects CGI heavy show. So you just need to kind of cut it around, do the post-production, cut the grading, all of that good stuff. Maybe, just maybe it could release, but it might be a bit too close. And as a result, I can just imagine that maybe they would want to take their time developing it and have it as a post the Batman part two release it look at it in a similar way to Joker right Joker was filming in November of 2022 and it finished earlier this year like as in way earlier this year and then ever since then they have been doing post-production and it's not even releasing until October 2024. There is absolutely no way that Joker needs to wait that long. The reality of the situation probably is such that they realized that they couldn't make release, you know, finish the post-production edit by October this year and have it release in October 2023. So they still want that October date and they've added a whole other year on top of that. Again, there's, there's no way something like Joker, which isn't remotely CGI heavy at all, they just add in buildings and them in the background and whatnot. Sure, the musical numbers probably add a bit of flair to all of that and maybe a bit more work than the first movie, but I'm telling you, it doesn't need that much post-production time. But they just want they just want to release it October next year. Maybe the Arkham series, even if some of you want to argue it could be squeezed out before part two, they might just be thinking, nah, we're gonna develop it and we could release it as a post part two project to bridge maybe the gap between that of part two and part three, just like the Penguin series is doing between part one and part two of the Batman. Also, just another thing that I want to mention that I don't know if enough people have uh, thought about because obviously a lot of us always look for connections and could it tie into this? Could it be setting up that? What if the Arkham series is a project that just doesn't really connect to anything so deliberately in the way that the Penguin series is? A good example of this would be indeed the GCPD series that as many of you know, got put to one side and was even described as evolving into the Arkham show for only Variety to report that the projects are indeed completely separate and the GCPD series is still in development. For those of you who are still wondering because I still get questions about that, apparently it is still in development. My main point here with bringing up the GCPD series again is that that show doesn't really seem to be connected. It, it was a show to be set during Robert Pattinson's Batman Year One and it surrounded the concept of a corrupt cop fighting for his soul. So the idea there, considering it's a prequel, it's about the GCPD, the cop fighting for his soul, that's a fairly self-contained story. It's not really setting up anything. I guess it can kind of be seen as Loki being set up into the corruption that the Riddler takes down in part one, but you see my point here. The same thing could happen here with the Arkham series, or while it could technically still connect, especially with us undoubtedly seeing characters like Joker and Riddler in some capacity, it might be more of a concentration of the, the very microcosm that is the haunted house that is Arkham, and that would be perfectly fine with me as well. And even more reason as to why they might not be rushing to get that out there. It can just be like a self, not self-contained project, it's still within the world of the Batman, but all while there could be those loose connections that could set up part two if they wanted to squeeze it out by then, I do think it's going to be more of a character study on the character of Arkham itself and all of the messed up horrific 
deliciousness that can come with that. So that's why I think they're still going to aim for a post part two release. And that will tide fans over to an extent between the years we might have to wait for part three. So let me know what you think of that. Or let me know if you disagree with me and you, you actually really do think they're going to squeeze that out before part two as well. But that is everything I wanted to ramble about with regards to the Arkham Asylum series for Matt Reeves' Batverse. Some things that I want to see, some things I'm kind of thinking might happen, and just some things that we're somewhat wondering about with regards to this show. Make sure you let me know your thoughts on not only my thoughts, but anything that I may have actually forgot about that you might be like, hey, Bo, but like, I would have thought you would have been excited about this. Why didn't you talk about this? Well, let me know and I'll try and reply to your comment down in that comment section. I love talking about this. I love the potential future of this Batverse. We're still a little bit of a ways away from some things. We got halted by the strikes, but since the WGA strike is over, since SAG-AFTRA, the actor strike should hopefully be ending soon. We are going to be getting some meaty stuff in the next two to four months with regards to a lot of things DC. So make sure you subscribe to the channel to never miss out on like bonus videos like this, but also news updates, breakdowns, reviews, and also like this video. If you got this far, I'd really appreciate that. But until next time, Bat Family, I'll see you in the comments section. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a lovely rest of your day. I'll see you, Bat Family, in the next video. Goodbye.